Part 8, The Rabbit Noise. It was a bit lonely there on the log while the hooligans slept, Roxy decided. The night was dark and she was still very hungry. She was more hungry when she had nothing else to do but lie on a log and think about food. A nice piece of fried chicken, perhaps a chewy cookie with chocolate chunks, a hot bowl of her mother's tomato soup with a thick slice of buttered bread. She wondered what her parents were doing right then. They must be sick with worry, she imagined. The people of Chin in Hand would wonder how five school children could just disappear in a single day. Roxy studied the little piece of sky that she could see through the leaves. There was only a sliver of moon, but the stars were bright, and as the earth moved and one star after another disappeared from view, Roxy reminded herself that she must not fall asleep. It was when she noticed that the black of the sky had turned gray, and the gray was turning pink, that she heard the noise of far-off scrunching of twigs and leaves. Footsteps! She rolled off the log and tumbled over to the trench. Someone's coming, she whispered. Don't move! Don't sneeze! Don't make a sound! Then she hid herself in a thicket. In a few minutes, Roxy could hear the voices of Rat and Snake Eyes, but could barely see them in the early dawn. They stopped not ten feet from where the hooligans were lying, and Snake Eyes said, See, Rat, there's no one else on the island. Then if anyone's eating our food and drinking our water, it's you, said Rat. I don't know why you don't own up to it instead of saying it's me who's eating more than his share. Now you listen, said Snake Eyes. I divided up that food fair and square. A can for you, a can for me. A bag for you, a bag for me. Now we got some missing, same as the water, and I think it's you tucking some of it away. So if we run out, it will be me who goes with the empty stomach. I'm sorry I ever let you in on this. Well, don't think I'm not sorry already said Rat, living out here like savages getting eaten up by skeezers running for cover every time a plane comes over. And right at that moment, there it was again, the drone of a plane in the distance growing louder all the time. It flew low over the island just as before, then it went on. Rat and Snake Eyes waited a minute to see if the plane would come back. When it didn't, they moved on through the brush, coming so close to the trench that Roxy sucked in her breath, afraid that one of them might step through the branches and fall in. She heard Snake Eyes say, Well, it's not going to do no good to fight. When we get off this island, we can each have us a house with a dozen rooms in it, and we never have to look at each other again. That's okay with me, said Rat. Have to say, I'm getting right sick of seeing your face each morning. Last thing I look at before I sleep at night. Grumpily, they went on and Roxy gave a long, relieved sigh. She crawled over to the trench when she was sure they were gone and told the hooligans they could come out. Stiff and frightened, Helvetia and Simon and Freddy and Smokey Joe emerged from the hole and sat on the log, arms wrapped around themselves to ward off the chill. You almost had those robbers down there in the trench with you, said Roxy. They were disclosed with stepping on you. And she showed them with her hands. It's awful down there, said Smokey Joe. A mouse even crawled in during the night. I thought someone would come looking for us by now, said Freddy in a small voice. I'm hungry and thirsty both, said Simon. There was quiet in the little gathering, and then Hilvisha asked, What do you think we should do, Roxy? It was the first time Hilvisha Hagus had called Roxy by her real name. 
the first time she had not said something about Roxy's ears. Well, said Roxy, a plane came by yesterday and a plane came by today. A search plane looking for us, I'll bet. But it won't know we're here unless we give it a sign. And what kind of a sign would that be? growled Simon. Where are we going to get a billboard ten feet high? We're going to make a distress signal on the beach out of rocks, said Roxy. And she recited the second paragraph on page 60 of Lord Thistlebottom's Book of Pitfalls and How to Survive Them. To attract the attention of rescuers, the unlucky traveler should make a large triangle of any available material and place in a location that can be easily seen from a distance. Do not panic. How can we make a triangle out of rocks? asked Smokey Joe. The rocks are on one side of the island, the beach is on the other. We'll form a rock brigade, said Roxy. Simon will go to the cliff and hunt rocks to Helvetia. Helvetia will carry them through the seagrass to Freddy. Freddy will bring them down to me on the beach and I'll make a triangle on the sand. And what will Willie do? squeaked Smokey Joe. You'll be the lookout, said Roxy. You need to hide up by the robbers' camp, and if either of them leaves the tent, you give the call. What's the call? asked Smokey Joe. The men will hear. They'll hear, but they won't know what it is, said Roxy. Everybody, lick the back of your hand. What? said Hovatia. Make it good and wet, said Roxy. Spit on it if you have to. The hooligans stared at her. Roxy demonstrated on her own hand, and the hooligans giggled as they slopped and slaughtered their skin. Now, said Roxy, remembering what she had learned from Uncle Dangerfoot, give that hand a long, slow kiss, and it will sound like a squalling rabbit. She put her mouth to the back of her hand and kissed and the sucking, smocking sound was indeed one that Helvetia's hooligans had never heard before. Why would anyone want to sound like a squalling rabbit? asked Freddy. To attract other animals that might like a nice fat rabbit for dinner, said Roxy. A fox maybe, and then the hunter kills the fox. In a matter of seconds, all the hooligans were making the squalling rabbit noise. <coughs> and Roxy remembered the time she would lie in bed on a Saturday morning making those wild and crazy noises until her mother would come to the door of her room and say, Roxy, dear, please, the neighbors will think you are ill. At last, Roxy held up her hand to stop the commotion before it got so loud that the men might hear. The hooligans paid attention. Now, Roxy continued, if you hear Smokey Joe make the rabbit noise, pass it on to the next person. That will mean the men are leaving their tent and you have to hide. So, Simon Sarley set off for the rocky cliffs. Helvetia set off to the seagrass. Freddy hid himself on the hill above the beach. And Roxy helped Smokey Joe find a hiding place near the robber's tent. Then she went down to the beach alone.